drama. Now we're in a territory where it seems normal, right? I mean, it's not like romance or comedy, but even that, like those genres, they have to, you know, over dramatic, be comedic or be funny and all that stuff. So now we're in drama. There are nine movies starting with Rumblefish. Rumble Fish is about a guy whose name is Rusty James, which is a great name. One thing about this movie that I'm not sure on is the acting of this guy. I don't know if the actor did it on purpose or not, but he talks in a way that either it's the environment that he grew up in or this is just bad acting. I'm not sure. It's so in between. This character took me out of it because I think there's like two moments in this movie where it gets ridiculous. Be grounded, right? This is like the movie's fictional reality and there's like a floating body, out of body experience, motorcycle hitting this goddamn guy. That's all right. I guess that's a part of this world, this fictional world. The age of consent or like the oldest age or what's considered an adult is 25 in this movie, which what being an adult is like back in the 80s and 70s and 90s, because nowadays in your 30s, you're not having a kid or having a house. By the time you're 30, back in the day, to have like a family, own a house, own a car, all that stuff. Nowadays is a bit different. I feel like if you're in your 30s nowadays, you live in an apartment that's like super cheap. Things are just a bit different nowadays. The black and white filter, I thought that was just there for artistic sake, you know, just be like, yeah this is a black and white film throw it back to those films back in the day but no upon thinking about it it does reflect rusty james character and how he sees his views as black and white in the environment that he grows up in everything's either good or bad there's no kind of in between and then i guess that kind of correlates to the end as well where he gets a motorcycle because his brother dies due to gang shenanigans i think something like that right i already forgot either way his motorcycle i guess being an adult i guess that kind of foreshadows that kind of just going out of that black and white perspective rides off he goes off to a sunset there's like birds flying and shit. He just looks kind of thinking about what to do with his life. Speaking of those ridiculous moments, there's one moment near the beginning of the film where it feels like gang versus gang, you know? Rusty James character with Nicolas Cage, which I forgot that this is a Nicolas Cage filmography, but he's in his movie as kind of the sidekick character. He is one of James' friends just hanging out. I believe there's like an orgy scene between him and all the other boys and girls. Don't know why that was there, but it was there. It's also where he cheats on his girlfriend. Nick Cage is in his movie, but he's not important at all. The brother, he gets his motorcycle and like gets off it while having the psycho go to this guy and then it cuts to a shot of him hitting the guy which it doesn't and it flips multiple times in a ridiculous kind of cartoony way and i thought that was the tone of the movie i thought the tone was very slapstick comedy route but this is a drama film so i was like wait a minute that fell off and i don't know why it was there it was the one moment where it's like okay this is kind of ridiculous and then the other moment is rusty floating he has an out-of-body experience going through life seeing what his life is like his mistakes and this feels off because i did not expect this to have some kind of fantastical genre type to it so it came out of nowhere i was like what the hell is this it wasn't bad it was more like okay i'll just write down my notes because it seems kind of weird and then his family you could correlate his views on his family he has a drunk father he has a brother that he looks up to he's not particularly you know the best role model his brother does whatever he wants and that correlates to rusty james doing whatever he wants as well which reflects his responses to this one girl he's going out with her cheats on her says fuck you to her like two times because he cheated on her there's this one sweet moment where it's like oh, okay yes this is a very not normal family i mean they are normal but it's very evident that they're not doing so well but they still have a bond with each other so that is a nice moment so rumblefish this movie is about rusty james perspective on life in general mistakes reflects who he is as a person and how he'll move forward by the end of the movie so as the first movie it's pretty good Racing with the moon. Racing with the moon. So like with Rumblefish, there's not this grand plan, grand explosion thing, or, you know, some kind of big plot. It's a movie about two boys having to get ready for a war. The whole movie is about leads up into that war. The journey, two weeks or six weeks before, they have to go off to war, which I think it's like World War II? 1942, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's World War II. I think I know history. There's a time frame here, and you see two friends bond with each other, being friends, having a fallout, having a comeback, being friends once again, and then having to go off to war see if you got henry this is uh i guess the nice kid the shy nice kid he gets a girl the one thing i do want to talk about is realization what war is or takes him into the injured soldiers his face and his realization that oh shit this is war and me and my friend nick cage we're gonna go into a war like that here's the fuck out of him it puts in perspective oh shit i don't really want to do this this is the one time and one character that does reflect his worries about war and him not wanting to leave because he doesn't want to die he doesn't want to lose an arm a leg it is scary stuff it's something that's relatable and hopefully 
doesn't happen no more. And then you got Nicolas Cage. He's more of the, I guess, outgoing, cocky type of character. But he's friends with Henry. And so they work at this bowling alley. They clean the bowling alleys and whatnot. But he makes one fatal mistake. His girl is pregnant. And so throughout this movie, he needs money. He needs $150, which nowadays is like super cheap. But back in the day, $150 is like maybe $1,500, $2,000. I don't know. But it's a lot of money back in the 40s. And tags Henry along to, into doing these very shady things. And hey, we need money for this girl she's pregnant i need to pay for it pay my dues and whatnot let's get some money and then through shenanigans and whatnot it creates a rift between the boys but eventually get back together because they're heading off to war and i also think nicholas cage's character he's the one to like make fun of war there's like this war exercise thing fake injured and then there's like a sergeant commanding everyone to do the work henry or i guess cage and henry they're like hey you know what let's mess around and so they like mess with the sound of wanna and then they run away and then that's when henry meets all those injured soldiers but it seems like nicholas cage doesn't necessarily want to take war seriously seriously as he should be more than henry because he sees it as a joke he sees it as you know what i will come back alive you know whatever this ain't no big deal and then henry's like the polar opposite of like oh no this is this is scary i don't want to do this and then the racing part of the title so racing with the moon i was like where the hell does a racing come from turns out these boys they like racing with the train and getting on it and getting back off it so at the end of the film where they're headed off saying goodbye to their friends and family and whatnot they don't go on a train yet they wait and then they run to it just as this game that they were playing back six weeks before to go off to war so i do like that their friendship is still strong what happens during war that is unknown that is left to audience to imagine themselves but the movie ends with the boys getting on the train leaving for war so racing with the moon it's a simple story about two boys prepping for war while also dealing with the typical teenager young adult shenanigans on the way of getting there and one of them has a realization of i don't want to go to war while the other is like i'll come back alive i'll be fine whatever so in the end racing with the moon was a good movie birdie this is the first movie where it feels like there's a really good emotional thing to it because it's about nicholas cage trying to help out a friend who's in a mental institution and wants to get help and wants to you know convince him hey you're not insane or crazy please get your ass up and be normal and that's the strongest part about this movie trying to help out a friend who mentally is not right in the head it's a very strong narrative to have his friend who loves birds who's like i want to be a bird and then they like wear bird costumes he flies like a bird pretends to be like a bird but nicholas cage still his friend because he wants to be or more likely there's no one around his same age so he was just like hey bird boy let's be friends at least that's what i came off as because there's no other kids as tall as them so i just assume, hey, you know what we're about the same age let's be friends so there's two timelines going on there's the present day stuff with the asylum stuff and then the flashbacks i'll go with the flashbacks first and then present day stuff the flashbacks are how they met they built treehouse shack they bonded with each other about birds this shack had birds come in and out but they also share the same interest of they both have really bad parents or at least one or two bird boy's parents hold on wait what's his name did i even write his name down i don't think i wrote his name down i'm gonna call him bird boy so his parents they are assholes they don't really like bird boy's things and bird and so they destroyed his shack and whatnot they don't seem to treat him that well and then on cage's side his father is kind of aggressive it's kind of implied that he's physical towards him hits him he yells a lot he does hit him at the police station they have that thing going on there's this one moment where bird boy steps up to nicholas cage's father and that to cage was a great moment standing up to his own father because because he could never do something like that thinks of himself as a coward meant something to him was like you know what you're my hero and then right before nicholas cage has to go to war they decide to build like this bird malfunction thing or whatever like big ass wings like falcon doesn't work something just cool to see seeing their mistakes seeing that hey you know what let's take this bird thing and bird love to the next level i do feel that there was way too many flashbacks once i got to the hour mark i was like okay good no more flashback and then it kept going to flashback i get that they're trying to correlate the past with the present but by the time i got to the hour mark i don't think i need any more flashbacks i think this is good i think it's fine but they keep going back to flashbacks so that part of it was like eh, all right don't need any more than you know how they met wearing bird costumes building bird suits and how their parents were like that's it keep going back to it and then the present day stuff nick cage is hurt from his war injuries throughout the film he has ptsd of it seeing his friends or comrades die right in front of him the visceralness of it and seeing blood on his face but due to war and that of his father he has these violent outbursts and the doctor at this mental institution like okay you've got a problem you need to control it but he's not crazy enough you have Nicolas Cage trying really hard to convince his friend to get out of this bubble of wanting to be a bird or just something's mentally blocking him. Now I do want to say I know nothing about mental stuff or just what happens when someone is mentally not right in the head. I know nothing about that whatsoever. So what happens in this film I don't know if it's true or not. I have no idea I'll be honest. After multiple attempts of trying to convince him, trying to feed him, trying to get him to pass memories, Bird Boy does eventually break and is like okay I'm fine now. And again I don't know how like that works. It feels 
kind of like, wait, what? Is that how it works? Like, I have no idea. But KG eventually helps him, breaks him out. And once they're dropping off this roof thing, he thought, oh no, you're killing yourself. But no, there's this other lower building. And I think he responds, what? Which implies that he's fine now. There was this mental block and he was fine. And I don't know how I feel about that. I feel that was too easy of how mental illness works. So I'm not sure about that. But like the part of him trying to convince his friend, trying to help his friend, that part was great. The one and only friend that he had trying to help him, trying to care for him. All the options doesn't seem to work until the very end. It's just at the end and the results is a bit questionable. It's like, I don't know if this works or not. But either way, the movie got the point across of seeing two friends, seeing what they were like in the past, now in the present, two completely different people. One is hurt physically and one is not mentally. And seeing that journey was really damn good. So in the end, Birdie was a damn good movie. It's wake. The Boy in Blue. Now I thought this movie was gonna be a boxing or a sports film, and it is. But based off the poster of Nick Cage and like wearing his headband thing and not having a shirt and all that being sweaty, I thought this was gonna be like Rocky. And it kind of is, some aspects. I won't be surprised if this movie was compared to Rocky back in the day or there's, you know, inspirations from it. But I didn't expect this movie to be about rowing your boat or rowing the boat sport. I don't know the exact term for it, but I didn't expect that. And I was kind of bored because I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was gonna be you know fighting or boxing but no it's roll your boats it's fine it is what it is for me it's kind of like a safe film wanted by the cops compete in this tournament for this old guy because why not i don't know and i forgot exact reasons why but he has to do this he meets a girl here he has a girl back in wherever he was at but cheats on her he's like you know she's whatever meets this one girl falls in love with her and it's like i don't know this is turning into a typical movie like rom-com and drama film as well like a sports movie it didn't really gelled with me at all and so because he wins the first tournament he gets well known in this town near philly i don't know the exact town but he gets well known people start liking him but he has his past he is a wanted man and when he leaves there's this one moment where okay this is a nice moment where the town sings for him he gets acknowledged by this town who don't really know who he is as a person they probably should have questioned why he's wanted by the cops but they don't do that instead they sing for him because he's seen as a hero of this little town this village or whatever and he's like you know what this is a nice moment this is very nice but i have to go go away and you know pay for my sins and then the rocky comparisons is the montage the training montage of him rowing his goddamn boat it was a good montage i liked it it was like yeah you know what i don't really like this movie but this montage is gonna be super hype the music reminds me funny enough of when my mom owned like dubbed chinese or japanese movies and they would have these songs in these movies that are like hella 80s and 90s and so because he falls in love with a girl or he likes a girl he has a training montage he's wanted by the cops he's a well-liked person in this town he has to win and by the end he does he's still celebrating the people will, like grab him and they push him up like rocky does or whatever it's a good moment but at the end of the day this movie is nicholas cage rowing his goddamn boats and that to me is just not as interesting as the other films on his list and because of that i thought the boy in blue was an okay film you know it was just it was there they didn't really have an issue with it it was okay it's an entertaining film if you're gonna watch it in the background but it was all right Time to Kill 1989. I don't know what the fuck happened in this movie because I forgot. Like I only wrote two lines of notes on this movie. I think it's about Nicolas Cage in like Africa or war or something. He meets a girl, he falls in love with a girl. He has a wife, he has a toothache. This girl gets shot and killed. He wants revenge and I don't know, something like that, right? I legit don't remember shit. You know what, let me just whole section of this movie. I'm just gonna read off my notes. So it says Cage has a toothache. He does, he goes to like, I think he's in war. He has a toothache. He wants to see a doctor. And so he goes sees his doctor and he has a toothache and he'll be fine. Okay, what a weird way to start the film, but let's move on. Oh, you know what? This is the best part. He gives a chameleon a goddamn smoke. He starts smoking and saying, you know what? Fuck this joint. He gives it to a chameleon and the chameleon just kind of goes off smoking. And it was so dumb, but also ridiculously fun and stupid. So if there's one moment that's worth watching it, this is the moment. Or you know what? Just look it up on YouTube. I had to watch this on YouTube because I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I had to watch this through illegal means and it was free on youtube or not free youtube has those free movies section but this wasn't on that it was just kind of uploaded freely and i was like, okay this is illegal but whatever i'll watch it because i couldn't find it anywhere else on any streaming platform it was probably on tv or cable tv but who the hell has cable or even watches normal tv anymore sleeps with this one girl thought it was even like a sexual assault thing and it was at first seemingly but then this woman enjoyed it and then next was this girl gets shot she gets killed she's murdered this enrages cage he goes to his leader or lieutenant he's like we get 
that find this girl or this killer he tells his whole story in a flashback to this one guy they go to like, the village of these people they make threats to them i think at some point but then they back off and then the last thing i wrote was had to kill girl and the only issue with this is that i don't remember shit i don't even know how it even ends because i forgot so essentially what i'm trying to say here is i watched the movie and i forgot about it the movie's not bad i don't remember being bad nor is it great it's more like what is going on okay there's not really anything interesting going on right now so i'm just watching a movie that i don't really care about whatsoever that's what time to kill 1989 feels like to me bringing out the dead now this is a martin scorsese film as well so i think this is gonna come first then the scorsese video i think but i'm gonna talk about this film again later on probably not as long as this one because i've already talked about it this is a movie of a medic nicholas cage is a medic he works in the medical field and it takes a toll on him this story is essentially him slowly losing his mind having to grieve maybe not grieve but deal with dead bodies families and friends that are upset they have a dead loved one right next to the room all that stuff it takes a huge toll on a person and that's what this movie is about that experience and perspective but one thing i want to say before i get into the other stuff is one character that shows up as a bit is that security guard or like policeman with the sunglasses he's a funny bit just every time he goes into that hospital he's there having people to wait for their loved ones in the hospital there's like one quote or line he's just like don't make me take off my glasses i think or sunglasses that was a really funny line that's all i remembered from him because he was just a fun bit to have pop up every now and then so in terms of nicholas cage seeing dead people this is one girl that he sees and this is the one body that he cannot save and so whenever he's driving around he sees like this face of a woman on different people and he's probably desensitized to just this work and environment because i don't think the movie specifies how much time or how long he's been medic but it seems like a very long time because he has like dark bags under his eyes and i think they progressively get darker and darker as the movie goes on because of stress of the chaos in the hospital whenever we go to the hospital chaos is the right word for it because you got people that are hurt you got this one guy that really wants water for some reason he really really wants water the doctors are when i'm being like okay calm down they do are super stressed out they need to save people him going out having just to relax but then getting called back into work and he hates it clearly he's become tired of it desensitized and kind of slowly losing his mind and then i think he gets two different partners former and then one's the one at the beginning the fat dude where he wants out and then you don't see him for like the rest of the movie the one kind of i guess corrupt or kind of messed up asshole medic is the guy beating on that one dude i forgot for what exact reason but he is a bad medic and just kind of not gonna lie that was there for like movie's sake i feel like no one in that field will really do this unless there are stories out there that i have no clue about then this part of the movie it feels like okay this is for a film sake movie sake to add drama to it to add into cage's character of stress and chaos he even takes drugs by the end because he goes you know what screw this and then you've got patricia arquette's character now i do feel like her character is kind of the giving and also receiving information type character where she doesn't do anything she's the one person in the family family member that's losing this father and throughout the film you have this ongoing plot of can we save this man and then every time cage goes back to the hospital he has to check but eventually all of this hope and just kind of sulking and being like hopefully he's alive or whatnot sadly doesn't pan out this is one really creepy ass moment of the father who's in real time in bed and asleep cage being there he hears and talks to this body that's not even talking to him saying to pull the cord kill him and he does and i don't know if this is just him wanting to kill this father because he doesn't want to hear or bear this burden on like the family and friends and he doesn't care about that because he's become so crazy insane and desensitized or because of weird fantasy supernatural stuff the father is trying to tell him hey kill me please i had like a heart attack or whatever just in my life it's one of those two and i don't know which one i'm assuming the first because based off of cage's drug news and all that's happened in this movie i'm assuming it was his choice to be like you know what i'm gonna kill this guy it's not worth it for the family to just keep on hoping that their father be okay and be alive he's already old enough right i'm just gonna kill him father dies he has to go knock on the door being like your father's dead the family having to accept loss but it seems like patricia arquette specifically had already accepted that because she didn't seem too worried and then there also seems to be this relationship between the two as well which i don't really care about but then the movie ends with them both in bed laying next to each other or something like that the point of it nicholas cage is done with this shit he doesn't want to do it no more near the film's final moments he makes a very questionable choice and then i guess in a way puts the family's stress and chaos and worry to peace and ease 
Jeez. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, there's a guy that gets impaled. Cage is trying to save this character, but he just can't. There's also a part of that as well, maybe adding to the whole, this isn't worth it. If he sees a person impaled by like a pole or something, it really is like, well, what do I do? This is messed up, but there's really no saving this person. But in the end, bringing out the dead, I guess in a way fits with the movie because it's a damn good movie about a person slowly going insane, tired of their work field and a need to be free and just get out of that. World Trade Center. Now, this movie is obviously about 9-11, what happened on 9-11, 2001. I was only a year old when this event happened, so I don't have any memory of it. I was a little baby, drinking out some milk, probably some orange juice, I don't know. But I did learn about it in history class, like during the sophomore year. And this movie plays out kind of the way that I would expect it. If you were within the time frame or remember what it was like during this time, I think you pretty much get all the different perspectives in this movie. The people during the fall, the people outside of the fall, and then all the dead people that were not found at all whatsoever by the time this video gets out which is like 2022 i think probably should have done more research on this but i think all the people were found so you got the characters nicholas cage michael pena mainly in the fire department trying to help out and so once they go there they get trapped these two characters are the perspective from within during the fall and so i knew nothing about these two characters they are real people but they're obviously played by pena and cage but they, i didn't know if they even made it out alive or not and turns out they did i think they retired from duty in 2003 i think 2003 and i mean i wouldn't blame them who wouldn't after this just seeing them stuck under the building just kind of saying their peace and final moments you never know what's gonna happen so them saying all these words being like well i guess this is it essentially and then you get the perspective from outside people that saw it on the news or the people that knew that were in those buildings or in that plane either didn't realize or found out a bit too late or knew and were like worried not knowing if they're even alive or not and i think they i don't think they showed this or it's more implied but i wish they would have shown more of the normal day i mean it's very at the very beginning so i guess it does everyone's going to school everyone's going to work normal safe day and i, I don't know where no one would expect like planes crash into the towers which i'm assuming it was like that in real life because it was just so unexpected to have people hijack the plane and crash into it now i was a little worried watching this movie because movies about real life like murders or incidents don't like because it feels like it's being preyed upon this movie it's more so it shows the different perspectives from each person or each group of people everyone knew about this event the only reason i know it and like younger generations when i know it is because it's being taught in school in like history class everyone just kind of stopped and watched real tragic and it was too big not to like notice it and not know what was going on and so luckily this movie doesn't feel like it's being preyed upon or just kind of there to make money i guess in a way it does it's not like sensationalizing you know look what happened it's cool right it's more like hey this is what happened now you know or at least a fictional version of it but also based on real life events so in the end world trade center was a good movie he's decent the runner this is a political thriller slash drama i think and right off the bat i was not interested he's running for a senator sex scandal going on which ruins his like senator run and there's even more scandals and that really just didn't interest me so when i got to this movie i was like, okay i'm gonna watch it but man i hope it's not boring and it wasn't boring it was more of a topic political movie that i just have no interest in watching whatsoever the reason i watch media and all that stuff is to escape it is a form of escapism trying to help out his hometown in louisiana the gulf coast and while he has good intentions he makes a couple of mistakes the media and press are really hard on you know having a good look and whatnot to be a senator and all that stuff not only does it ruin his senator run his wife his family one thing i want to say is his accent there's one scene i think only one scene unless i just kind of blurred it out of my mind because it was so ridiculous but he has like a i guess louisiana accent it was like wait a minute don't have this stupid ass accent throughout the movie and i don't know if he does because when i first heard it i was like like, no no hell no i missed all of it so he's running for senator to help out louisiana in the waters because it has a bad environment finding a resolution is always the hardest part i feel like about these type of causes what's the actual solution and everything's kind of going well except there's a sex scandal so i think you got like a cheerleader teacher or coach who really wants nicholas cage like really really wants he just kind of backs off he has a wife and everything but he was tempted to do this and then you got like journalists asking questions and somehow they like come up with this sex scandal 
Idol article and it ruins his image. Tried out from the press and media. You got his publisher. Wait, hold on. Is it publisher? I think it is. Sarah Paulson is playing this character and so guess what? There's also this affair between them as well. They like kiss together and awkward and weird. She's trying to help him be the senator but then he has these like inner demons and past mistakes or whatever and then his wife notices all these things. Wife gets pissed off and it ruins his whole thing. This movie is seeing a person who is about to be in power ruin everything because of a sex scandal and then from that point on it's a domino effect of just wrong mistakes. It just keeps going downhill after that and so that's what this movie is essentially. By the end he's fine. He's like you know what I guess I'll do it myself. I'll work in construction and help these other people. That's how the movie ends. Getting there was just like okay you know this is fine. He's making mistakes. He was about to be this big ass person. It failed. His image was ruined and it ruined his marriage because of another girl and when the credits rolled I just felt absolutely nothing and that to me is what the runner is like just absolutely nothing not a bad film again i don't think any film on her is bad it's more which ones do i care about the most and the runner is you know it's fine but i also don't really care about it And then the final film, Pig. Now this was a movie that was well known back last year because it was titled Pig and Nicolas Cage and premise was kind of like John Wick where he was gonna avenge his pig, trying to get his pig back. When I first watched it last year, it was like, okay, this is gonna be like John Wick, right? Nope, it wasn't and really like that. The movie wasn't about action, grittiness because Nick Cage in his movie looks dirty. He's tall and imposing and hasn't cleaned in ages, right? You would think it would go like a very dirty, visceral, action pack route and it doesn't. This movie is about loss and dealing with loss and grieving. Throughout the film, they drop mentions of you used to be a big thing. You used to be this wealthy person, well known, but after the loss of someone or a loved one, he just kind of left and he's found, you know, another loved one, a love for this pig. He actually cares about this pig. So when it is taken away, it hurts a lot and he wants to get it back. Also, isn't the only character dealing with loss. The kid that's helping him or driving him around, he's also losing his mother as well. And so he's also going through the process of loss. And so that's kind of the theme about this movie. And since he's, you know, dirty he's not really cleaned he's kind of looked down upon but they recognize him because like, hey you need to be big shot you know so they just kind of tolerate him there's that kind of like social aspect to it and then he soon finds out that the pig is dead the pig is long gone and so his mission his thrive the reason he came out of the woods it's now gone and so he decides to go back into the woods and whatnot and he's grieving feeling the loss of someone that he loved or someone he considered a friend and then in the end the movie ends with him on his bed and then that ending kind of left it up into you know did he kill himself or day now i think he just moved on you know like granted there's some people that if they lose a loved one they can't bear to live without them so they just commit suicide as well it could also be that but that's like super bleak and dark going through loss and grieving that's gonna happen to all of us eventually but then there's also this other side of like it's too much to bear so i was gonna kill myself it's something that you have to get over at some point just go through with it and move on with life as normal move on with life there's some people saying that he died or like he killed himself he just cannot bear to live without his pig or he just kind of moved on with life as life does you just gotta move on and so kind of re-watching it again for the second time i do appreciate more of the fact that it was just more just kind of mellow and more dialogue based again first time you're expecting john wick second time it's like okay you know what's gonna happen and so i just kind of appreciate more of this route of took its time told the story to the other characters kid and the father and by the end for cage you don't know what happens to him so in the end pig is a pretty damn good movie still on second viewing and does bring up how different people react to going through loss and grief and that was it for the drama genre. I think overall pretty good. There's some like, what is it? Time to kill, you know, whatever, the runner, whatever, right? But most of these films I liked, it brought up interesting questions, interesting themes, trying to help out a friend and birdie, also prepping for war, a good chunk of films. Hopefully this continues. There isn't like later on in the filmography, just awful, awful movies. Over a hundred movies. I'm gonna rank a hundred movies in like September, I think, or August. I hope like later on there just isn't horrible goddamn movies. That's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching